I'm starting going up around Progressive Field, and if you allow me to step outside for a second, I'll show you why that's not the only change you'll see. When you look at the space behind me between Prospect and Huron, some people see the side of an old building and a parking garage. Others, however, see a blank canvas. They'd like to see transformed to sell ads and to celebrate Cleveland during All-Star Week. And that's why the folks from Las Vegas-based Elite Media came before the City Planning Commission to seek approval for a series of temporary wall graphics that will add life to dead spaces, creating a more vibrant field downtown for the game. We uh, have a very fortunate job in traveling the country, scoping out buildings, looking for opportunities. We have a special niche. In addition to their work with Major League Baseball, they have an exclusive agreement with the NBA with their work on display at the NBA All-Star Game. Their proposal in Cleveland will focus on spots in the central business district around Gateway for these temporary, and I mean temporary, installations. They'll go up the week before the game and start coming down the day after. The application that we use is a self-adhesive type sticker or a banner type application, so it's a very simple process for us to go up and down. Original plans that included buildings like the Nine were scaled back with just a month ago and more design approval hurdles to cross, they don't have a lot of time to play with. We are definitely under the gun for this particular uh, project. Well, the visitors to Cleveland for the All-Star Game will get to see the outside of the $185 million transformation of Rocket Mortgage Fieldhouse. But because we're old friends and everything, this morning I can give you a look inside. Inside the glass enclosed atrium of the Rocket Mortgage Fieldhouse, one gets a feel for the interior space created in this $185 million transformation. We can all recall the arena before where basically that was the entrance. The experience for our fans were to wait outside in the cold and into a small vestibule area to be processed and jammed up and then thrust into a concourse. Those days are over. The project adds more than 57,000 square feet of inside space for people to gather while opening up what was a cement box to the city beyond. Before with the arena, you didn't know if an event was going on unless you saw people coming in or out of the venue. Now the event goers can see out and the city can see in. Catching your eye will be the internal brushed aluminum curtain wall that will be lit up thermal tower-like with LED lighting. 1,500 different lighting combinations and we can also have motion within that as well. Inside the concourse, a total makeover as well, from the ceiling to new terrazzo floors. Some of the more dramatic features we found, though, are in the highest part of the arena, what was a claustrophobic space. Two sections of seats have been removed, which opens up a gathering space where fans can stand, get a drink, and not be removed from the action. A short walk away, another 3,000 square foot space for the Overlook Bar, because, well, it will overlook the lobby below, downtown Cleveland beyond. Whether you're in a uh, in, in a courtside seat or you're in the last row of the building, you have a, can have a spectacular experience. And the arena is shut down for the summer. They're going to reopen in 113 days as Akron's Black Keys take center stage on September 30th. Well, Washington may seem like it's shut down these days, but the reality is they don't go on summer break until August. Before then, though, they may actually come together on something, and that's a plan to help you better plan for retirement. There is a fundamental fact at play in America. People aren't saving enough for retirement. People are working longer. They're living longer. They're going to need more money. Jeffrey Noman is president of Barnes Wendling CPAs. He says employees of small businesses are often the most impacted. About half of the small employers don't have any plan whatsoever. And Washington really hasn't helped. The last major piece of retirement legislation that was passed was in 2006, like two years before the economic collapse, when a lot of companies got rid of pensions and 401k matches. It's a real problem because uh, people are living longer, healthier lives, and they don't have the savings to be able to take care of themselves. And those who have 401ks may not be aware of a simple quirk in the law that when you turn 70 and a half, even if you're still working, the government right now requires you to start withdrawing that money. I'm hearing from Ohioans across the board, uh, you know, all different income levels saying, wait a minute, I'm still working. Why should I take my money out of my retirement plan and have to pay taxes on it? Let me keep it in there and let it continue to work for me. That's one of the changes in a bipartisan proposal by Senator Rob Portman and others to make it easier for those small businesses to offer plans to their employees and allow those over 60 to catch up by letting them contribute more to their 401ks and IRAs and let them contribute longer. Once you turn 70 and a half, Currently, you're not allowed to put any money in an IRA. Why? Well, they're going to eliminate that. Newman says don't feel overwhelmed if you're behind where you should be with your retirement plans, but also don't put off catching up. Start, start today. Today's a good time. And again, with bipartisan support on this, it is likely that something will get passed this year. With Democracy 2019, I'm John Kasich.
Enjoy your Sunday.